Hello there, I'm back again with another video hoping to share five business lessons that we can learn from the challenges faced by Anthony Ferrer of the Timepiece Gentleman. Love him or hate him, running a business is tough. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. And when you put your business on YouTube, you'll naturally have people talking about you and your business. In this video, I'll apply my experience as a small business owner to derive five important lessons that we can learn from the Timepiece Gentleman's business. Hi, I'm Noel Lorenzana. I'm a CPA. On this channel, I talk about taxes and accounting related to small business owners. If you want to know more about that, check out my free ebook on 10 tips to simplify your taxes. Link is in the description. So real quick, if you didn't know, Anthony Fair of the Timepiece Gentleman runs a gray market luxury watch business. He's a controversial figure who's had his ups and downs, and more recently, more downs than ups. The first business lesson I think we can learn from Anthony Ferrer is in the area of number one, cash flow management. High spending businesses often get into trouble because of cash flow issues. Cash flow is the lifeblood of a business. It must be managed well. Spending large amounts on marketing for exotic cars, expensive dinners, and a luxury penthouse can create a flashy image, but if sales don't keep pace with the business's expenses, it will quickly lead to the business running out of money. For example, the timepiece gentleman rented a $95,000 per month. Let me say that again, $95,000 per month luxury penthouse in downtown LA. This was the most expensive penthouse in California. Anthony Ferris said they were trying to change the way the West Coast shops for luxury watches. Okay, he even trademarked this. Well, as you may have guessed, this didn't work out for them and they were out of there in about three months. Now, maybe he really didn't pay the full asking price, but I'm sure whatever the real cost was, it was still very expensive and a huge hit to their cash flows. Not to mention a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, which was supposedly being used for marketing purposes. These were probably still leased, but it's still a huge expense and completely unnecessary in my opinion. If I were in the market to buy a luxury watch, images of the owner driving expensive exotic cars would maybe suggest to me that they're making too much money off of their customers. That's just me, let me know what you think. The business lesson here is Regularly monitor and manage your business cash flows to ensure sustainability. You can't spend more than you generate in sales. If you do, you're eventually gonna to have to run out of money and have to close. Number two, brand image and perception. Okay, let's look at their logo. I personally think it's designed very well. You've got a guy dressed up in a tux showing off a gold watch. He clearly looks like a gentleman to me. And the name, the timepiece gentleman, it's a very catchy, strong brand name. They get 100% on the branding from me. But the problem that I and others have is that the branding doesn't actually match their actual brand image. Take a look at this picture. These guys are dressed like teenagers. I mean, come on, you're selling six-figure luxury watches. It's not that hard to put on some nicer clothes, at least a shirt with a collar and slacks. I mean, you walk into a jewelry store or a Rolex boutique, everyone's dressed nicely. Why do you think this is? Of course, they want to embody the brand's image of sophistication and high quality. This helps with the customer experience and fosters trust. Am I right? This also aligns with customer expectations, in my opinion and it's the industry norm for luxury goods and services. Let me take it a step further. When Anthony started out, he was down to earth and relatable. As underdogs in the gray market luxury watch business, people rooted for him and wanted to see him do well. I know I did. Fast forward to today, he's cocky, arrogant, he acts like he's better than everyone, and is constantly being ridiculed on sites like Reddit. He has gotten better about not letting the negative comments get to him, but he still reacts to them. Let's talk about trust or building trust. 
You want yourself and your brand to establish trust. After all, people do business with whom they know, like, and trust. Do you think Anthony Fair is trustworthy? Let me know in the comments. Brand image and perception is extremely important in business. Every interaction you have with the public, and that includes comments on social media, affect your brand's image. You don't want to cheapen your brand with, let's call it, bad behavior. Also, being flashy can get you attention and likes on Instagram, but it may also create a sense of fakeness or even mistrust among customers and potential customers. In my opinion, authenticity and transparency are often more appreciated by customers. The business lesson here is build a brand image that aligns with your target audience's values and perceptions. And whatever you do, protect that image and realize that everything you do as a person reflects back on your business and your brand. Number three, sustainability versus short-term growth. In business, you need to have a plan to have sustainable and consistent growth. A high spending approach can generate growth very quickly, but it's really not sustainable in the long term. Looking at the timepiece gentlemen, they clearly focus on short term growth with their extravagant lifestyle and excessive spending, which I've already talked about. In my opinion, this is a mistake. In business, employees or labor costs are usually the number one expense in my opinion. You want no more employees than you actually need. It's a big expense, and if they don't work out, they can be difficult and expensive to get rid of. Let's look at their employee roster from their website. Okay, we have Anthony. Okay, here's Z, coaching student turned employee. Is he still even there? His timepiece gentleman Instagram is gone. Okay, we have Trevor, Travis, and Lewis. Do they really need three sales guys? And Liz. I'm not sure what she's even doing anymore. She was in sales, now she's side hustling, doing something else. Darby, the videographer. Okay, so you have a full-time videographer, but you stopped making videos. Hmm. Adrian, photographer, do they need him? How hard is it to take watch photos with your iPhone? Andrea, secretary. By the way, that's an old fashioned term considered sexist and demeaning by some, just saying. So I don't know if they're all still there. We know Brian left, but that's still a lot of employees. If you don't need them all, you need to let them go. It's critical to have a business model that balances growth with profitability. The business lesson here is prioritize long-term sustainability over short-term growth. Like I always like to say, slow and steady wins the race. Number four, Customer service and reputation. In the gray market luxury watch business, trust is crucial. Any lapses in service or product quality can severely damage your reputation, leading to business losses. You want to treat each and every customer or potential customer the way that you would treat your best customer. This is my mindset and it works. For example, Someone called me at 8 a.m. in the morning on July 4th. He left a nice message and I could already tell he wasn't a good fit for the services that I offer. Some people would have just ignored the call or got upset for calling on a holiday, but I called him back anyway, listened to what he needed help with. It was for a City of Chicago taxi driver tax form. I told him that I haven't done those and it would probably be too expensive for me to do the work for him. But I did suggest that he go online, look up the form, and see if he could figure it out for himself. Or talk to one of his taxi driver buddies to see who they use. He was happy and the call only took a, a few short minutes. Now, I'm not always on top of things like this, but I try to be. Regarding the timepiece gentlemen, I think their customer service is mostly okay, but they need to do more to protect their reputation. I mean, you have a whole Reddit community of almost 4,000 people criticizing them and making fun of them. Whether it's deserved or not, it hurts their business. If you do a Google search on Anthony Ferrer or the Timepiece Gentleman, the Reddit results are right there on top. The lesson here is prioritize high quality customer service and protect your reputation at all costs. For Anthony Ferrer, cut all the nonsense and just keep it real. Number five, 
risk management. Operating in the gray luxury watch market can be lucrative, but it can also be very risky. The watch market is very soft right now and still declining. People aren't buying watches like they used to. It seems Anthony Ferrer is heavy on the consignment model, meaning he's not actually buying the watches outright. He's offering an arrangement to consign your watches for you and he collects a commission. This approach is good since you don't have to commit large sums of cash to acquire inventory. As I think about it though, you still have to pay sales tax when you sell consignment goods to the end consumer. Does anyone know how they handle this? I did make a video on whether I thought they handled sales taxes correctly or not, but I didn't consider it consignment sales. You can check out that video, I'll put a link over here. Anyway, his consignment commission rates went from this to this. His rates went from 10% to 5%. That is a big reduction and maybe not surprising since business is probably slow for them. And let's not forget about security risks. They were robbed twice with losses in excess of a million dollars. They've also got risk of being underinsured. Coming up, Anthony has plans to travel this summer via a summer tour. Anthony's plans to travel this summer via summer tour is full of risks that goes without saying. I mean, any bad actor could easily track them down in one of the big cities and well, you know what I mean. The business lesson here is, have a risk management plan in place to anticipate and mitigate potential challenges. And in the luxury watch business, there are a lot of them. Running a business is tough, and if you've been there, you know what I mean. Is there a business lesson that you think I missed? Let me know in the comments. I hope you found the video informative. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to check out my free ebook, 10 Tips to Simplify Your Taxes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.